Good morning and welcome to Bible in Years. Today we are on day 205 of 365 uh, as we go in through the Holy Bible, um, the New International Version, from Genesis to Revelation. We'll be traveling through the Bible and learning all about the story of the people of God. Um, there's a lot of incredible stories in here and, and uh, it's very encouraging to get to go together with you through this whole time. 205 days now, to be exact. And today we are going to be going through the period of exile. Um, as we talked about the kings that transitioned from reigning to being overtaken by, in the north, Assyria, and in the south, Babylon. And now we, uh, now we hear of the prophets and what they have to say about the people during this time of exile. Now we're going to be following through Isaiah chapters 30 to 31, Zephaniah chapter 3, and Proverbs 11, 13 to 16. So a little bit about each of the word. Isaiah 30, the prophet speaks of a rebellious people who carry out their own plan rather than God's will. Isaiah counsels Judah against making an alliance with the four nations because the Lord wants to fight for his people. The Lord fought against the Egyptians to set the Israelites free from slavery, and he will fight for them again if they trust him. After chapter 30 continues, we read that the people will have adversity and affliction, but their eyes will be opened. Uh, Zephaniah, yesterday um, we read about the condemnation of the people of Judah. As we see in Zephaniah 3.5, the unjust know no shame. Today we live in a shameless culture, one that has largely abandoned the ways of the Lord. We should feel ashamed of our sin, but not crippled by shame. For God has taken away the judgment against us. Isaiah prophesies of the coming of the Messiah. Jesus is the one who conquers sin through the cross. When we acknowledge our shame, Jesus rejoices and turns our shame into praise and glory. And lastly, Proverbs eleven thirteen to 16. Solomon teaches us, his son about the things that garner respect. Trustworthiness, not gossip. Guidance through adversary. And not co-signing on a stranger's debt and being kind-hearted, um, not trustless, or, sorry, not truthless. Um, so I can't read my own writing. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's continue together in our reading. Isaiah chapter 30 and 31. Woe to the obstinate children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine. Forming alliance, but not by my spirit. Heaping sin upon sin. Who go down to Egypt without consulting me. Who look for help to Pharaoh's protection, to Egypt's shade for refuge. But Pharaoh's protection will be your shame. Egypt's shade will bring you disgrace. Though they have officials in Zoan, and their envoys have arrived in Hanes, everyone will be put to shame because of a people useless to them, who bring neither help nor add. Uh, advantage, but only shame and disgrace. An oracle concerning the animals of the Negev. Through a land of hardship and distress, of lions and lioness, of adders and darting snakes, the envoys carry the riches on donkeys' backs, their treasures on the humps of camels. To that unprofitable nation, to Egypt, whose help is utterly useless. Therefore I call her Rahab, the do-nothing. Go now. Write it on a tablet for them, inscribe it on a scroll, that for the days to come it may be an everlasting witness. These are rebellious people, deceitful children, children unwilling to listen to the Lord's instruction. They say to the seers, see no more visions. And to the prophets, give us no more visions of what is right. Tell us pleasant things, prophesy illusions. Leave this way, get off this path, and stop confronting us with the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, this is what the Holy One of Israel says. Because you have rejected this message, relied on oppression and depended on deceit, this sin will become for you like a high wall, cracked and bulging, that collapses suddenly in an instant. I will break in pieces like pottery, shattered so mercilessly that among its pieces not a fragment will be found. For taking coals from a hearth, or scooping water out of a cistern. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and rest is your salvation, in quietness and trust is your strength. 
but you would have none of it. You said, no, we will flee on horses, therefore you will flee. You said, we will ride off on swift horses, therefore your pursuers will be swift. A thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five, you will all flee away, till you are left like a flagstaff on a mountaintop, like a banner on a hill. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion, for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. O people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry out for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. The Lord gives you the bread of ad adversity and the waters of affliction. Your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Then you will defile your idols, overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a menstrual cloth, and say to them, Away with you, for he will also send you rain. For the seed you sow in the ground, and the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day your cattle will graze in broad meadows. The oxen and donkey that work the soil will eat fodder and mash, spread out with fork and shovel. In the days of the great slaughter, when the towers fall, streams of water will flow on every high mountain, on every lofty hill. The moon will shine like the sun, and the sunlight will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven full days when the Lord binds up the bruises of his people and heals the wounds he afflicted. See, the name of the Lord comes from afar, with burning anger and dense clouds of smoke. His lips are full of wrath, and his mouth, his tongue, is a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent, rising up to the neck. He shakes the nations in the sieve of destruction. He places in the jaws of the people a bit that leads them astray. And you will sing as on the night you celebrated a holy festival. Your hearts will rejoice as when people go up with flutes to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. The Lord will cause men to hear his majestic voice, and he will make them see his arm coming down with raging anger and consuming fire. With cloudburst, thunderstorm, and hail, the voice of the Lord will shatter Assyria. With his scepter, he will strike them down. Every stroke the Lord lays on them, with his punishing rod, will be to the music of tambourines and harps. As he fights them in battle with the blows of his arm, Topheth has long been prepared. It has been made ready for the king. Its fire pit has been made deep and wide, with an abundance of fire and wood. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of burning sulfur, set it ablaze. Chapter 31 Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in the multitude of their chariots, and in the great strength of their horsemen. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel, or seek help from the Lord. Yet he is too wise and can bring disaster. He does not take back his words. He will rise up against the house of the wicked, against those who help evildoers. But the Egyptians are men and not gods. Their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, he will help. And he who helps will stumble. He who is helped will fall. Both will perish together. This is what the Lord says to me. As a lion growls a great lion over his prey, and though a whole band of shepherds is called toward together amongst him, he is not frightened by their shouts or disturbed by their clamor. So the Lord Almighty will come down to do battle on Mount Zion and on its heights, like birds hovering overhead. The Lord Almighty will shield Jerusalem. He will shield it and deliver it. He will pass over it and will rescue it. Return to him, you who have so great revolted against, O Israelites. For in that day every one of you will reject the idols of silver and gold your sinful hands have made. Assyria will fall by a sword that is not a man. A sword not of mortals will devour them. They will flee before the sword, and their young men will be put to forced labor. Their stronghold will fall because of terror. At sight of the battle standard, their commanders will panic. Declare the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, whose furnace is in Jerusalem. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Zephaniah chapter 3. Woe to the city of oppressors! rebellious and defiled. She obeys no one. She accepts no correction. 
She does not trust in the Lord. She does not draw near to her God. Her officials are roaring lions. Her rural, who, her, <laughs> tongue tip. Her rulers are evening wolves who leave nothing to the morning. Her prophet, or prophets are arrogant. They are treacherous men. Her priests profane the sanctuary and do violent to the law. The Lord within her is righteous. He does no wrong. Morning by morning he dispenses his justice. And every new day he does not fail. Yet the unrighteous know no shame. I have cut off nations. Their strongholds are demolished. I have left their streets deserted with no one passing through. Their cities are destroyed. No one will be left. No one at all. I said to the city, Surely you have, you will fear me and accept correction. Then her dwelling would not be cut off, nor all the punishments come upon her. But they were still eager to accept corruptly in all they did. Therefore, wait for me, declares the Lord. For the day I will stand up to testify, I have decided to assemble the nations, to gather the kingdoms, and to pour out my wrath on them, all my fierce anger. The whole world will be consumed by the fire of my jealous anger. Then will I purify the lips of the peoples, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him shoulder to shoulder. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshippers, my scattered people, will bring me offerings. On that day you will not be put to shame. For all the wrongs you have done to me, because I will remove them from this city, those who rejoice in their pride. Never again will you be haughty on my holy hill, but I will leave within you the meek and the humble, who trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel will do no wrong. They will speak no lies, nor will deceit be found in their mouth. They will eat and lie down, and no one will make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout aloud. O Israel, be glad and rejoice with them, you with your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment, has turned back your enemies. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The sorrow for the appointed feast I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. At that time I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame and gather those who have been scattered. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they were put to shame. At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise amongst all the people of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading, the last reading, comes from Proverbs chapter 11, verses 13 to 16. Gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but advisors make victory sure. He who puts security for another will surely suffer, but whoever refuses to strike hands in pledge is safe. A kind-hearted woman gains respect, but ruthless men gain only wealth. Here ends our last reading. Uh, we see this wisdom of Solomon teaching about how to garner respect. Uh, and God gives us some good things to think about. To not gossip, but be trustworthy. To seek guidance um, from advisors as opposed to our ourselves. Um, and that we are not to co-sign on a stranger's debt but that we are to carry our own debt to the Lord in order that God might repay it. Um, and lastly, that we should be kind-hearted, not ruthless. It's uh, it's one thing to to want to make the most out of things, but um, if we do things without love, it says in James that it's like a banging gong or a, something that's that's useless. Um, so it's better to show respect and care for others and in kindness come before others. Uh, great wisdom we see from Solomon. And also great wisdom we see in Zephaniah as it says that God will um, punish those who are, in, who are in need of justice, um, that his righteousness will not fail, um, but that those who um, understand their own faults who are who are needing of purification it says then i'll purify the lips of the peoples and then it says that he will put gladness in their hearts again that he will not turn back from them 
He will raise them up, and they will once again take delight in him. And have rejoicing and singing, he will rescue them, uh, as it says, as a lamb is rescued. Um, and gather those who have been scattered. He will bring praise to them, honor and praise. He will gather them together in their home and restore their fortunes before their very eyes. Uh, this is a great promise that God gives to his people that walk in his ways. And lastly, we hear of Isaiah. Isaiah who talks about the woes of the obstinate nation of Israel as they flee from him that they cannot flee. And it's useless for them to rely on Egypt, who is he calls Rahab the do-nothing. Um, yeah, you, you should never put your trust into people who only talk and have no show who who are who um, don't walk the walk, but just simply talk um, of foolish things, and that they should not rely on Egypt, as it says. This is what the Lord says: As a lion growls, a great lion over his prey, and though a whole band of shepherds is called together against him, he is not frightened by their shouts. God's not frightened by Egypt or these great nations. He brings them down. He humbles them like he does everyone else who sits there in their pride. Uh, God um, loves when people take pride in him uh, and not when they take pride in men who do foolish things. So rely on God is the message. We thank God for this. We come to God in prayer, thanking him for all he's done. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you praise and thanks. Thank you for the opportunity to be together. Thank you for the word that you continue to speak to us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that unpacks your word for us in teaching and truth. And you reveal your heart to us as you spoke through the prophets. Those here today, Isaiah and Zephaniah, and through even the wisdom of Psalm, we assemble these pieces of wisdom so we can understand how to live our lives in ways that don't fail to live um, for you. We ask for your guidance by your wisdom, your truth, and your word. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Help us to not only hear your word, but to listen and to act upon it. Help us not only to know it, but to accomplish it in our lives by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for following the game today, uh, as this is day 205. Um, just ask that you might pray for me as we go forward, as I pray for you that you grow in the wisdom and knowledge and fear of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.